Hey guys, Professor Bell Comic Book University, Batman 101. Legit, this is Batman 101, not just the issue number. This is a great new take on Batman, the hint of what's to come, and I am so on board for what's about to come. We're going to talk about all that stuff after we talk about who made the comic book, and we're going to talk about that after we give a quick reminder. I'm wearing pink because it is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Canada and America specifically, as far as I'm concerned, all over the damn world, bruh. Listen, we care about the boobies here at Comic Book University, so do a self-check, check your friends, check everybody around you, have everybody check themselves like real talk. Do a self-examination or talk to someone who should do a self-examination and you know, great time to remind yourself about stuff and consider seeing a specialist if you have any questions or doubts or anything along those lines. Like I said, we care about boobies here on Comic Book University. Got to keep it silly. Okay, so this issue is called After the Laughter. Uh, I love I love the, <laughs> the sound, the inflection of that, After the Laughter. God, that's awesome. Anyway, I'm, I'm easy to please in that regard. James Tinney IV is the writer. Guilem March on art. Tomio More does the colors. March and More do the main cover. The letters are VCs Clayton Cowles. There are two variant covers, including a 1 and 25th. And Bill Finger, of course, created Batman. So this first image is the only thing that I'm going to complain about as far... Well, the second image, technically, is the only thing that I'm going to actually complain about in regards to the art on this comic book. Because I love the art, but the, the Robin specifically. Everything else, I love it, but the Robin horribly done uh the the body contour the shape the, the the way the face looks i do like that it's very generic and it could be any of the four main universe robins but that being said really terrible body contortation contortation i think it's con yeah just contortion anyway don't like it the way that this could have very easily been saved well i don't know about easily but the way that this could have been saved that image of robin is to have the buildings just on the outside edges of the image contour in if they would have convexed in or concaved in then um it would have looked like one of those uh those curved lenses the curve aperture lenses lenses that some people use like when you see pictures of people on top of everest they like to show everything rounded and you know you can really focus in on the you know the the the, the middle of the image like where they're touching the flag on the top but if they would have just done that, it would have looked like a curved aperture image. And it would have looked excellent. It would have looked perfectly fine the way that his leg just kind of comes up way too high and in front of his cape, which is going back too far to begin with. All of that would have been perfectly fixed if the buildings of those skyscrapers would have just been boop in like that. Aside from that, you try and find a complaint about the art in this comic book because I can't. Aside from that one part that one image of just robin alone forget about it forget about it so batman is having a conversation at the beginning and the end of this comic book with catwoman and seeing i'm telling you man seeing the hopes that he has how hopeful he is that something can be saved while knowing that it's probably not going to be able to be saved and then at the end where hey man it can't be saved We've got to completely readjust, but he still has hope for the future. Dude, that is a great way to begin and end this comic book. Damn, there's a great way to begin and end this comic book. All right. In the middle, we have Batman versus Grifter. Zero complaints with this. Zero complaints with the, like, there was a bit of a cheat mode used in this. I, I Yeah, I, I'm not going to argue about the way that this was. Heck, um, realistically, if anything, Batman could have just been like, yeah, cute moves. Hey, where were those moves when uh, the Joker War was happening? Where were you? Wouldn't that have been nice? You know, just pointing out, you're a grifter in more ways than one. <laughs> that was actually done later by Fox, and I like the way that it, that it did happen. Uh, as far as talking to Lucius Fox, Fox, here's the thing. I know a lot of people want to say that he should have just returned the money. But seeing Fox reading Lucius actually being his own man, he still respects what Batman does. And he did make the offer. And, like, it was very respectful, okay, the whole thing. But it was also intelligent, coldly calculable. And I really enjoyed the hell out of this conversation. If anything in this comic book deserves a shining light, a spotlight, it's that conversation between Bruce and Fox. Holy crap. 
one of the main reasons for that is because too many times there's that split between reality and otherwise. You know, there was that that time period in the movies where we just we didn't have that that connection. Technology increases fast, and they're really quick to use the new technology, CGI and whatnot, but how long did it take for everybody to finally realize that, hey, man, we can't make movies the way they were done before because the 80s crowd, they just, you know, they're not the only ones watching movies. Young kids are watching movies now, and they're just like, so why didn't you just pull out your cell phone and call the cops, right? You can't keep on doing the thing where it's like you got to run to a phone that's on the wall or use a phone booth or something like that. Those days are over now, all right? If you make a movie that's not a time period piece, you know, like 80s or prior, everybody's got to have a freaking cell phone at this point because who doesn't have a cell phone? Somebody's going to be like, well, actually, my mom, yeah, I just proved my point. Anyway, um, <laughs> real talk, man. Uh, cell phones are everywhere. So likewise in here, <clears throat> I, I, by the way, for the sake of conversation, I think the first movie that really addressed it hard was the American Pie reunion. The whole thing where it's like, hi, sir, a uh, car broke down. Can we use your phone? All three of you, none of you have a cell phone on you? <laughs> like, it was great. It was such a, you know, hello, stupid, pay attention. And the rest of the movie started following suit from that point on. Likewise here, the idea that, you know, we use biometrics in every single thing that we do. So, you know, retina scans, if you're going to be super high tech with, you know, the comic books, but even in real life, fingerprints, DNA samples, right? You can't have blood left at the crime scene. I've talked about this all the time. Comic books need to evolve with the times. Otherwise, it's only appealing to older people like me who most of the times won't care about that stuff. But you want to get younger kids involved Wake up and actually realize that if you leave blood at a crime scene, you are now a suspect. And if you leave blood at multiple crime scenes, you are absolutely a suspect. You're going to be brought in. You're probably going to be arraigned. So, like, these are things, suspension of disbelief only goes but so far. And evidence shows it's not working. It's not applicable to kids who grew up in the idea that what are you talking about? We've always had computers. We've always had cell phones. We've always had biometrics, right? So fingerprints, all of that stuff, man. It's, it's important to pay attention to that stuff. And while that wasn't the most, while that didn't necessarily happen directly in this comic book, I'm hoping it will happen soon. I hope that Tinning will actually pay attention to that. They did focus in on the idea that, hey, the IRS actually pays attention to these things. I mean, you got freaking Trump, you know what I'm saying? And people are going after his tax returns. I think more people should go after not just tax returns, but charities. They actually went after Trump's charities too. But how come the Clintons and the Bidens that nobody's going after their charities and things like that and recognizing, dude, what's going on? So while you can have a certain level of uh, suspension of disbelief on there, no, I think that at some point Gotham City is going to look towards its favored son and say, you know, maybe we should actually do a, 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 a tax assessment at the very least of the biggest business in Gotham, Wayne Enterprises. Where is all this money disappearing to? So with the Joker war, Lucius Fox is pointing out and Batman Bruce Wayne recognizes this. Hey, the IRS is looking at you. This is how you're going to get a bunch of people who jump onto a comic book. John Byrne rule. Every comic book that you make is someone's first comic book. Somebody jumps on the you know a bunch of previous issues and they're like 20 years old or whatever, 14 years old. They're going to be like, this isn't realistic. This is really dumb. How could a guy get away with something like this? Um, but you look at it nowadays and it's like, yeah, that makes sense that the IRS would be paying attention. Batman has to make massive changes to himself going forward. And all of this is highlighted in the Fox conversation. Guys, I cannot stress enough, and I can never put enough emphasis on how important this conversation is between him and Lucius Fox. Go back and read it a second, third time if you need to, because it is a thing of pure beauty. There's action in the conversation. As it's great the way that it, it actually happens. And looking forward to what's going to happen with Batman in the future. Excuse me, where he's going to have to live from this point going forward. I cannot give or heap enough praise upon this comic book. Holy crap. And 
the biggest question I have is the Halo situation, because that kind of came out of nowhere for me. If somebody knows what Bruce is talking about when he when he mentioned that to Grifter, the second conversation, look at the way this works, man. Batman Selina, Batman Grifter, Batman Lucius, Batman Grifter, Batman Selina. Whoo! That curve, baby, that curve. Anyway, you got to love them curves, right? <laughs> anyway, I, dude, I, anyway, so, so if you know what that Halo conversation was about, let me know. If not, I'm sure we're all going to find out pretty soon. It seems like something new to me. Um, all that being what it is, I am looking forward to this new version of Batman on here. I also can't help but to point out, I'm hoping that at some point Lucius or somebody else says something to Batman, actually calls Batman out on his crap. Look, you and I were all, I think, in the same exact boat. If we're listening to a 10 minute plus review of Batman, a comic book that you could have probably read at about that much time, I think that all of us want Batman to have made this choice. But a sensible person, and there has to be some sensible people in Gotham somewhere, right? A sensible person would say, Batman was literally willing to give up all the things, so everybody who, you know, all the things that made him special besides Batman, that made him able to do a good job and actually help the city. We can't deny the fact that Batman trusts Lucius and he trusts certain people to be able to keep the orphanages going, continue them, do their own thing. Meanwhile, he doesn't believe that anybody else can do the job that he does when he puts on the costume. So I get that. I genuinely do get that. At the same time, we have to pay attention to the other people who are going to hone in on this and say, we do have to realize that Batman chose, instead of trying to help out with orphanages, schools, and hospitals, and things that can actually help more people than just punching poor bad, uh, bad guys, poor criminals in the face, you know, maybe... And this is something that I believe Tinian is going to go there with, because he has mentioned several times how people are broke, and the only way that they can see to get ahead or to, to, to get their head above water is to actually join, like, the Joker or the Riddle, or because who else would do that? Think about it. It's not just Batman who's beating up on poor people. The Joker and all these criminals who hire these flunkies all over the place, whether it's a clown mask or a penguin suit or a freaking question mark on their face or or people who have to have a, a scratched off coin on whatever, all these people, they're being exploited, right? Batman can, and I'd love to see it be something about class warfare. It could also be a story about the difference between the privilege of being born into money, the privilege of cheating the system and getting away with it, and the disadvantages of trying to play by the rules. And the people who are trying to play by the rules are the poor people. Some of them get, get caught up in, you know, collateral damage. Some of them get caught up and actually join the bad guys. Like, it's, it's a wild system. Gotham is a really interesting place. It's easily the most interesting place in all of the DC universe, probably in all of comic books. Like, Asgard and Atlantis have Atlantis in either universe, Marvel or DC. Like, what do they have on Gotham City, right? It breathes. You can hear it. You can smell its breath. It's usually the sewers. Talk to Killer Croc about that. Guys, there is so much that is addressed in this comic book. And seeing this radically new dis uh, direction that Batman's going to be going in, holy crap, cannot wait to see where it's going. This book right here has my absolute highest recommendations of the week, probably of the month. I know we got another week left here, but dude, this is amazing. This is out of control amazing where this is going. This isn't the kind of comic book you like. I get it, whatever. But I can't wait to see how all this is going to be addressed. Tinian needs to stay on Batman forever. Get the chains now. <laughs> all right? Anyway, guys, I'm out. Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Keep it in your mind. I'm out. I, I don't know if I'll be doing any more reviews for the rest of the week. That's right. I don't know if I'm actually going to get to... Um, Harley Quinn. I'm hoping I can, but guys, I am like super amped up back against the wall busy this week. Uh, talk to you guys later. Um, watch an ad, like the video. 
Uh, you like free content? Cool. Subscription is also free. Talk to you guys later. Professor Bill, Comic Book University. Class dismissed.